evening, folks. Good evening. Or good night. Hey, everybody. We're going to start out a little short-handed tonight. Uh, might be joined by at least one more person in a bit. But for now, Joey, why don't you tell us who you're playing tonight? Uh, I am playing Jean Gilroy. Something like that. Or Gilroy. I don't know, French is hard. But yes, I am playing an ex-cultist that we uh, picked up on our pa uh, last arc. And uh, yeah. We'll find out how much you've performed. Yep. And Travis. I am playing Theodore Oswalt. Um, talker savvy and adventurer extraordinaire. folks aren't here. Let me put you folks in the scene. Uh, we're going to open up. You have managed to find a nice little nice little uh, coffee house. Got some of the luxuries of home here for you. Obviously, uh, Theodore is drinking some very light coffee that's been doused with uh, milk or goat's milk, whatever cream he can get his hands on. Okay. It's been adulterated okay. a little bit just to make it more palatable. Uh, you're surrounded by uh, people going about their daily lives. This is, as I said, this is a nicer establishment. I think Theodore seems to gravitate towards that sort of place. So the yeah. people in here obviously have more money. Uh, you do see more, you see a few more Westerners in here than you've seen in the, some of the other places you've gone to lately. Uh, businessmen and tourists, but people who are pretty well off, just like the pair of you really are. And with the main group off doing who knows what, investigating some leads they've had, the two of you have been, have been keeping up on what everybody else is doing, but you haven't been really in the thick of it. Mm -mm. I've been enjoying my vacation. <laughs> That's sensible. But Jean, what have you been feeling? Yeah, he's he's been stressed out, like not knowing what this group's all about because, you know, when he first joined them it was at the worst moment of his life. So he, he's he's nervous about, you know, being alone with Theodore again. And <laughs> he also has a uh, cup of coffee and a biscuit on the side and uh he, it, he takes it, only sugar in his coffee. Is it just black coffee? No, it, like he takes black. sugar. But yes, yeah, he, it's just black, no cream. I felt like that. Yeah, he, he he's the kind of guy that wouldn't. J just just looking at his sheet, yeah, he's not the kind of guy that wants cream. <laughs> You know, John, sometimes you have to enjoy the atmosphere of a place. Just let it all soak in and just relax. There's always some hustle or bustle people are worrying about. You just enjoy the atmosphere. Just, it's okay. He, I'm gonna look at his sanity before I respond. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good habit of mine. <laughs> uh, so as he's uh, dipping biscuit in his biscuit in his uh, coffee, he says, "That is fair and all, but um, 
you never know whenever the walls are going to crash down around you. That's when you know when the party's good. <laughs> we have different opinions on parties. I mean, you wanted to beat my face in at one point. So, I mean, clash of personalities. <laughs> well, what are we feeling like doing? We've seen the sights. We've seen this lovely establishment. What? What? They left us on our own. We could do whatever we want. Uh, wh business or what pleasure? Was the, what was the scary lady's suggestion? Uh, bird something. Um. Oh no! I just let her talk. Honestly. She suggested we talk to somebody important. We could talk to that diplomat guy. That guy. Yeah, yeah. Connor, Connor <laughs> definitely left a bad impression, right? Or did no, I not hear that uh, right? I, I, I think, I think Connor just uh, uh, insulted or scared some merchants. Oh. Uh. You know, you know. I have to say, out of the group, you you are the most easy to talk to. You're not yelling at me. You're, you're not <laughs> telling me I'm doing something wrong. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you, John. Um... It, it's nice to have someone to just enjoy the evening with. Uh, it, uh, it, you you see, <laughs> you you tend to not get uh, punched in the face as much if you keep a level head it seems connor enjoys that 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 kind of reaction from people the man likes to beat his head into walls i feel like and i don't think the walls stay standing for much longer do you know where that diplomat would be i again haven't been paying attention this place has been uh, very fun. I mean, they're, fa they're, they're they're a powerful figure. Everybody knows where they are. Okay, are you talking about fighting Omar Al Shakti, who's the uh, the high priest and businessman, or are you talking about finding um, the diplomat Warren Bizart, who is a diplomat, a yeah. little bit of a scumbag, and currently hiding in the back of a shop? That one, yeah. yeah. That one. We, 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 we heard that he's in hiding, but we would probably know that he was hiding in the same shop that Connor harassed. Yeah, th like, that wouldn't have been a secret. They would have been explaining ex to Birdie exactly where they went. And, yeah. Uh, you were at least there. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we, we know where we are. We're just remembering where we're supposed to be going, because, you know... Yeah, we're 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 not the high strung people of our party. Yeah, th th this is the chill group. <laughs> Until we learn a little bit more about the horrors. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> can you, real quick, Joey, roll three d six. Sure thing. Because we're gonna we're gonna do your luck the right way. All right. Now, if I didn't like myself, I would have made a different dice set for this guy. <laughs> you don't like yourself, Joey. That's part of the problem. True, true. I should. Uh, 12. Yeah, so you're starting with 60 luck. Hmm, nice. Uh, and just so you know, you do have different um, pulp talents than mm -hmm. Connor does. Yes. Uh, Our lifter... Let's you get an extra die whenever you're trying to lift a person or a thing. And heavy hitter allows you to spend ten luck points to get an additional damage die when you're doing melee damage. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, this guy is how I would normally play a character. I he, like him. He's built for one thing, really. Yeah, yeah. His his high strength score and punching things. I will tell you somehow. I will be finding a way to. For you to like lift me up and just special me. Yeah, fastball special. 
Fast We're on it. Uh, Theodore will finish his cup, put it down. Uh, yeah, I imagine some... Theodore being like 5 a 160 pounds sweat. You know what I mean? <laughs> like... Yeah, no, no. He's a weaselly little rat. Yeah, he's he's a he's a smaller build guy. He's still growing though. He's still growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's still growing. He's not still growing that not, much. Not not with that coffee though. <laughs> he has hopes. Okay. Okay. He's gonna be at least six <laughs> feet. At least. Uh, but he will put down. Or he'll finish the coffee. Put down. Uh, for the tab and a little bit extra for the tip. Okay. Because yeah. of course, you know the the, the serving per lady is cute and Theodore is. A big flirt. Yeah, uh, you you aren't entirely sure whether it's more the tip or your personality, but you're gonna get a big smile as she starts clearing the table for you. <laughs> I think we'll be back later. He throws a wink. Um, and I think that's a perfect opportunity for us to leave. Okay. So, uh, it is not. Are you you're planning to head straight to Bizarre's hidey hole? Yeah. Okay. So it is not um, incredibly easy to find. Uh, he's made himself difficult to find. But uh, you do have a slight advantage of Jean being able to speak at least a smattering of Arabic. So uh, he can ask for directions. Within about an hour or so, we'll have you all uh, both standing outside of the shop with the red door. I don't see me. I see me. There you go. Uh, real quick, uh, Jean's uh, vision is centered only on himself, so I can only see, like... <laughs> Let me fix that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I, I doubt this is going to end in a fight, but he's got a very self-centered vision. <laughs> Theodore will put his glasses on, because I just now decided he wears glasses. Hmm? I don't think anyone in the group wears glasses, so... No you know. one else in the group. I think, uh... I, 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 I think James has reading glasses. I think that was established. No? Hold on, no. I, I need to check something. I'm not positive. I don't remember if James wears glasses at all or not. I don't think so. I just imagine somebody that learns ancient Egyptian in any capacity would have some kind of reading glass at that point. And I, you know, I, I think that's just my trope savviness kicking in there. Well, he is, he is a nerd, so what are you going to do? What year is it? 1925. Oh dang, I can't wear aviators. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, just mirrored I, I, lenses. Just I got, I got some out. sunglasses. There are sunglasses, but yeah, not... Yeah, there are sunglasses, lenses. but yeah, yeah like, no. Fluffy was aiming for the reflective mirror lenses. Yeah, that's and... a bit in the future still. Yeah, no, yeah, I just that, have sunglasses. The glasses, that, the, the glasses that scream, I am a cop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what kind of shop is this? Uh, clothing shop. <coughs> Men's clothing. Yeah. That's my thing. I love clothing and fashion. Okay. Uh, so we're walking up, and he's like, and "Jean will say, yeah, this is a clothing store from what we remember, what we were told. So uh, we're posing as tourists, getting okay, first clothes. Off, we are mm -hmm. getting you new clothes. Your clothes look kind of, you know, Theodore will just like grab the like T-shirt, like." You need something more. There's, there's like a hole in this one. He's just looking down at you. 
And he and he says, matter of factly, I don't think they have my size. <laughs> like, yeah, he he he's not he, he doesn't have the same size as Birdie, but he has the size category. Yeah, of what Birdie should be. And so <laughs> he, yeah, he's a shit brick house. Birdie's size might be more how much space she seems to take up in a room, and yours is how much you yeah. actually take up in a room. Yeah, she has the presence of a 95. This guy's got the stature and presence of an 85. <laughs> so, he's a big dude. He's a big dude. Uh, you can head into the shop, and just as last time, you're going to be greeted by the shopkeeper. He's going to tell you... Uh, you know, welcome. I have, I have many clothes along the walls here. I'm happy to dye fabric and make anything you could want to wear. There's uh, no need for you to die, friend. <laughs> no, I can't say that. That that's 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 a little threatening. I was trying to make a joke. <laughs> well, luckily you can't speak to him. <laughs> He's speaking in Arabic. <laughs> um. I, uh, you know, and Jean re replies and and broken like, como estoy, Arabic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, twenty is enough to get by, but you're not having like deep philosophical conversations. Yes. Uh, yes. Hi. We uh, just arrived, and uh, we would like some clothes that you know w can help beat the heat here. Yes, of course. Uh, I d welcome to my shop. I am Abu Uja, uh, and I have. You're you are a bit larger than the normal customer, but we we have many. I I have provided clothing for many people, many men of different shapes and sizes. Uh, I am certain that I can put something together for you. Are you looking for something to go out in the desert, or are you just going to be? visiting the town uh we're mostly going around sightseeing uh we've you know looking for nice places to eat and i've heard that there's a uh lovely tea stall down uh down the way in this area and we're going to check that out like basically like being a little charming and you know yeah. Have, having a conversation with the guy. But oh, he's what? using the wrong word every now and then. <laughs> like, you gotta like, huh? Well, um, as you seem to be the person with the bunny, he is not going to object when you use the wrong word. He will just follow along as best he can. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do we know that uh, the diplomat person is in uh, here? Uh, James snuck into the back of the shop while Connor distracted Ugly last time. Mm, and Ooh, I think I'm gonna end up you. doing the same thing, but not to the same power. Because I'm a big dude! <laughs> it's probably- do... I'm gonna probably need some, uh, extra care. Uh, what was he a diplomat for? Like, where? To who? Let's see. Does he know English? He does. What information are we trying to extract from this man? Uh, you don't really like you. You know that he was the go-between who Roger Carlyle contacted to obtain some Egyptian artifacts, and Bizart was the one who went and found Najar to actually steal the artifacts and sell them to him. Hmm. You don't know, like, it's clear that the man is in hiding. But why? You can't be entirely certain. Like, why specifically? Do we know if he knows English? He does know English, for sure. Okay. He does. Yeah. Can, does, do you, can you ask this man where the bathroom is? My dear friend, Jean. Uh, yeah, he'll tell you... Well, the alley... There, there's an alley just down the way. 
Uh, as a go-between, I assume. Uh, I will reply with, uh, we are Westerners, we're not used to such customs. We... Then I suppose you'll have to go back to your hotel. <laughs> Damn. Alright. Um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, John, I need you to talk to this man, and, like, I'm, I want to slip out the back. You could, uh, you could ask. About. Hey, do you got a strange guy living here? <laughs> Um, you know what, why not? Okay. What's yeah. this man's name? Warren Bezart. God, this guy's just not gonna trust any white people after this. <laughs> <laughs> just... We know, or... There's a man here that... We wish to speak to. Um, he has some information that could help us find connections to people who are intending to do harm to your culture, and we want to uh, help. He capture these cult. Uh, uh, what's looks, that? He looks a little confused, and he says, "I, I am the only man here. I know. I, I have clothing, not, not information." There, there's but, not a man in the back by the name of Warren. You are this... free to make a psychology role, and uh, because you're being so direct with this, you can have a bonus die on it. Yeah, psychology. Ain't no way I'm failing this. Wow. Yeah, you. Maybe I should try the psychology check. I have a fifty-seven in this. Why? Yeah, why not? Why not? The fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I have fifty-seven. You have ten. Well, it might be the language barrier. <laughs> But yeah, John, he's, you're translating for Theodore, the guy says, there's, I'm the only man here, and he's like, actually looking at the curtain at the back while he's saying this. Jean will, uh, you know, carefully put a hand on the man's shoulder and says, it's okay, we're, we're, we're not going to harm you or anything that you own. We just need to talk to him. He says, "He like he yeah he he pauses for a moment. You can see him going over some calculations in his mind, and finally says, this is too much. Too many people are coming looking for him. When you talk to him, tell him he needs to leave. Tell him <laughs> the money's not enough anymore. Well." I've told him I... before, but he argues with me. <laughs> I will go back there and talk to him. John, would you look for some new garbs for us? Well, I mean, there's no reason you can't both go back there. He's not stopping you. Yeah, I, I'm, no, I'm, look, look I'm, I'm gonna give this guy good business. You know, I'm gonna buy some clothes for me. I'm gonna, you know, get 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 the good stuff, you know. Most likely get upcharged a little, you know, for the, for the uh, issue. If you want to come back, you can. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to, you know, ease this man's worries. Yeah. Alright. Uh, yeah, when you go back into the room, you're going to see pretty much the same thing that uh, the James saw the other day. It's a... Uh... Like, when you pass through the curtain into this room, it is rank. It is filled with the with body odor and the smell of whatever foul thing he's smoking in that pipe. 
is kind of sickly sweet. Does he have a gun? Uh, he's not pointing one at you. Well, does he have it in his hands? No, he does not have a gun oh. in his hands. Okay. okay. That's just the he's joke. Not point. Okay. You know, I, I just wanted to clarify because I think it would be funny for him to just like point a gun on me. I mean, he might have a gun. I'm not telling you he doesn't, but he's not holding a gun on you right now. Hello! Uh, yeah, there's a foul bed, some filthy cushions, a low table, uh, and when you enter the room, there's this, like, absolute wreck of a man kind of lounging on it. He looks up at you with absolutely wild eyes while he puffs on a hookah. It's nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Theodore Oswald. Uh, Warren Bessart, I assume? I'll reach out a hand, you know, trying to ignore the smell. He recoils as you reach your hand out to him. Like Something just, like you're gonna matter, friend? He says, <laughs> why do you know my name? Who are you? Did they send you? Did they? Are you here for me? Did they send you for me? No. Who's them? Oh, that's very clever. You know who they are. They said you didn't they? More than likely, whoever you're speaking about is the people I am looking for, not you. Well, don't look for them. Don't look for them. That's trouble. That's not good for you. Uh, I always wind up in trouble. I... Don't bring it here. I won't. You look like you're in enough trouble as is. When was the last time you cleaned the place? He, he kind of looks around and he's... Like, the question confuses him. He, he doesn't clean. This is this, no way a man should live. This isn't this isn't a modern person. This guy had I, money and means before, so... He probably never cleaned a thing in his life. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to reach a human aspect right now. Yeah. You seem to be down on your luck right now, friend. No, no, no. Everything's fine here. Everything's okay. There's nothing to worry about. You don't need to worry about me. I'm going to be fine. Just, uh... Listen. I... Me and my friends, we take care of... Strange things. And... You seem to be the type of person who might have seen a thing or two. More than likely, I am hunting for the ones that you're worried about. If you help me point, the if you help me point the direction of where they are, there's a possibility I can help end it. All you have to do is give, tell me a bit of what's happening, and in return, I can help take care of your problem. You can find some spark of your old life maybe in the process. That sounds like persuasion to me. I'm trying to charm him. You're going I, about I, it I, by persuading him, I think. Uh, this character does not have persuasion. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. I am trying to sweet talk him. I am giving him things that he wants to hear, you know. Uh, yeah. Is is Jean back here with you or not? Uh, Jean, you know, would probably at this point be walking back there with like a bundle of clothes in his arms. Okay, Jean. You're, I feel confident in saying that you would recognize that this man is uh, is smoking hashish. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I mean insane amounts of it. Like, the, the walls are stained. Um, it's just a persuasion roll? Yeah. Alright, alright. Uh, 
Yeah, Jean, Jean will walk in and, and like look at the walls, smell the air, and see the guy, and he's like, no wonder why they say that you were paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the fact that another man ha walked into the room helped my case. Yeah, yeah, it's 100% <laughs> my fault. I can't <laughs> because blame... I'm a large man. I can't blame my bad role on me. I have to blame it on someone else. Hmm. I mean, it it can be something that happens in the fiction, so yeah, it's possible that he just walked in at the wrong moment. Uh, but, yeah, seeing... Uh, seeing this large fellow walk in carrying a bunch of clothing, uh, you're gonna see the color drain from Warren's face. I, I will, I put my hand out to, like, separate the two. Mm. He's a friend of mine. He he's like a bodyguard. He 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 he's just make sure I don't I don't do anything dumb. And if something does happen, you know, he he's one of the people that would help solve the problem that I'm trying to help you with. You think he's big? You think he's big? I've seen bigger. <laughs> It, there's there's things that scare me, but he looks at he his just... arms. <laughs> looks at the guy like you're not helping. <laughs> Does he look like he's dressed himself lately? Uh, no. He looks like he um throws on a robe over his like undershirt and pants to go out in the streets sometimes. And otherwise, he's been um, wearing this clothing for way too long. It is ripe. You know what? I'll take off the shirt on my own back and hand it over to him. I don't mean you any harm. I just need to know more. All right. His eyes, his eyes will clear a little bit. He'll say, "Who sent you here?" No one. We just have heard that you might know some things, and we are looking for answers. I thought I knew some things. What do you think I know? You have. You were smuggling artifacts and yeah. dealings with the man for that, by the name. For that Carlisle. Yes, Carlisle. That's no. I don't know much about that. They had me get they had they just they just had me pick up they told me to get artifacts from Nazar. What kind of artifacts? I don't know. They were they were old. They were real. They were ancient. They had me ship them off to London. They said they were going to. We... They said they were they were going to come from New York to London. Did you ever see them? They came. Uh, they came in May. I think they came in May. They had me. They had me arrange all their equipment and permits. They wanted me to travel with them for for so so I could smooth things over if they had trouble. It was uh, it was um it, it was Dashore. They were in Dashore, the Bent Pyramid. They disappeared. What disappeared? They they did. Carlisle. Uh, Carlisle and Aubrey and Dr. Houston and Hypatia Masters, they disappeared. I am running these... I, I pull out a little notebook, because, you know, gumshoe, wannabe detective. Uh, I'll write these names down. You recognize these names, too. Uh, these are some of the principal members of the expedition. Mm. He says, Brady, Jack Brady came and told me they disappeared. They went inside the pyramid and they disappeared. 
and he said one of our he's, he looks at you when you talk we we came from london we had an interaction with uh, what, what was the director's name uh, let's see the one that was put behind bars the one that put you behind bars, you mean? Yeah. Uh, Edward Gavigan. Does the word, does the name Edward Gavigan sound familiar? Uh, yeah, yeah, he, he's part of Penhue, right? He's with Penhue. Yeah. Yeah. He was one of them. Well, he's, he should be behind bars now. Your, your dad murdered him. Oh, 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 you know what? He doesn't need to know that. No, he doesn't. Okay, you're going to tell him he's behind bars? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We... We're just trying to get people like that away. And... Well, they came back. That night, uh, Brady was so upset, he said he did... did <laughs> that can be in character. He's smoking. Uh, <laughs> he said uh, the the diggers had already run away. He said that he thought they they murdered Carlisle or they kidnapped him or something, and we didn't know what to do, so we just kind of just started drinking. But uh, they came back the next morning. They said they found something. I I don't know what. Sir Aubrey wouldn't let anybody else find out. He just... He made them keep secret. And they were... They were different. They were different. They they, they didn't act, like, the same. They acted a bit crazy. Maybe. Maybe crazy. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe crazy. I'm really, really tempted to say that copy pasta of crazy. I was crazy once, <laughs> but I'm going to push down that urge and. But then, um, this old lady, this old woman, visited me, and she said her son had been one of the diggers, and he ran away because they, uh, Carlisle. Carlisle and his friends talked with uh, an, an ancient evil. Uh, uh, um, they talked with a messenger of the Black Wind. Messenger of the Black Wind. She said that all of the all of us all of the Europeans that their souls were lost except uh, Brady and me. You're still alive. Yes, yes, uh, Brady. Brady and I, she said, we had our souls still, but all of the rest of them were lost. Um, she said, I, I could get proof if I went to the Collapse Pyramid. Uh, the Collapse Pyramid at Maidum, the Night of the Dark Moon. Night of the Dark Moon? The night, the night when the moon is slimmest. Would it be a cult to know what, it, what the moon phase is right now? No, it would be astronomy. <laughs> Damn! Uh, let's see, astronomy. I'm gonna roll it just because. Yeah, why not? Oh, that's archaeology. Where's astronomy? Anthropology is praise, archaeology. might not be on there, in which case you can just roll any of them that are at the base value. What is the base value? One? Probably, probably one. Damn. It would have been funny if I didn't know. Uh, I think... Yeah. Yeah, you just won't know for now, but that's fine. Yeah. He says, I did what? go. God you did me, go? I went. I took one of the trucks. I told them I was going to have some fun in Cairo, but I went. I drove the 20 miles to Medum, and I hid where she told me to, and in the midnight blackness, I saw Carlisle and the others 
<sighs> Obscene rituals. A hundred madmen. The desert came alive. It was crawling. The desert was undulating towards the ruins of the pyramid. And the ruins became a skeletal, bulging-eyed thing. There were strange creatures. They jumped. They came out of the sand. They started grasping the dancers and one by one tearing at their throats. They killed them all until only the Europeans and one other person was left. And then something came out of the sand the size of an elephant. Something with five shaggy heads and I realized what it was. It's madness to speak of it. I saw it rise and it swallowed all of the torn corpses and left only the only the Europeans on the blood-soaked sand. I, I'm writing this down. Um, can I roll Mythos to take a wild shot? Listen, yeah. I, I, I want to try to understand what he's saying. Yeah, yeah you can. Ah, yeah! Uh, so, from the weird stuff he's saying, it sounds mm -hmm. like he's saying the Sphinx came out of the sand. The Sphinx? The Sphinx. He says, I'll... it sounds like he's saying it crawled up out of the sand and began eating people. Not like a, you know... Shalgoth? That's one thing I know. No, no. like like the Sphinx. Oh. Yeah, okay. a, a Shogoth is a mass of, like, black goo and tentacles. The tentacles was the part that I was thinking about, but I'll, I'll nod. I I ran out into the desert. And I came up on a rise before dawn and I saw hundreds. I saw hundreds of them. Sphinxes, rank upon rank, drawn up and waiting for the hour of madness where they can spring forth and devour the world. That won't happen. I... I don't remember anything else for many months. The man found me, and he and his mother cared for me for two years. I was mindless and adrift, and they cared for me the whole time. I came back to Cairo, but I began to dream. I dream about it every night. They, I need my drugs, I need the hashish, I need opium, I need... My life is intolerable without it. Can you... Can you help me? You said you'll help okay. me. Can you help me get... Can you help me get what I need? What do you need? I need opium, I need hashish, I need medicine. I will, I will, I will reach out slowly, slowly. Just mm -hmm. hold his shoulder. You don't need those. You're stronger than this. What yeah. happened to you there isn't what's happening to you right now. I can't... I don't want to remember. Then don't think about it. This will be the last time you think about it. There's hypnosis. Damn, I should have took hypnosis. That you would have been have so hypnosis. cool. I don't have hypnosis. It is a thing, though. I should have invested into it. Well, you got downtime activities later. Let's see. Uh, I'm just checking what the base level for it is. It's five. Okay. So, I mean, you're a little bit psychic. No, the I base am. level is actually one. I have it at five, apparently. Then you might have put some points into it. It would be so cool, but I know I'm not going to hit it. I already hit an 8. You've got luck. 
know what? We're gonna roll it. Come on. I'm gonna spend four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you you put your hand on his shoulder and you're going to you're thinking really calmly and softly and you tell him this is the last time he's gonna think of it. That's what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Um after this conversation. It'll just have been all a bad dream. You'll want to do something more with your life than what you've been doing. You'll want to become a better man and find find something right you can do to the world. Make it a little bit more brighter. Okay. Yeah, there's um his addiction doesn't leave him. Yeah. But you can see that some of the madness goes out of his eyes. Uh, and he does actually, for the first time since you've seen the bed, he does look a little bit relaxed. Uh, in fact, it looks like he might actually go to sleep at this point. Uh, and... So if you don't have anything else to say to him, he's kind of lying back. Are there other any other names that that you could give us? Anything, anything else? Names. What names? You said you were being hunted, or people were looking for you was there who was the woman's name the one that told you to go out in the desert do you remember Nuri Nuri, Nuri. get some rest you've been suffering a terrible dream yeah, he will settle back onto his uh, his old dilapidated bed, and he will go to sleep. He will start softly snoring. Well, Theodore did his one good deed of the year. <laughs> uh, Jean will quietly go, we were supposed to kick him out of here. <laughs> That's a problem for him when he wakes up. He will... I think he will want to leave on his own. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it sounds like the two of you did manage to do something that uh, some of the others didn't. Yeah. Uh, while Jean is walking out, he will explain the situation. And will say... Um, Later, we will uh, send for him if he wishes to, you know, go with the person that is coming for him. We'll have a place for him to stay. Just let him rest for now. We're, we're going to get him some help. And he, he's going to pull out some money and give it to him as a, uh, a, as a little bit of a, a tip. You know, like, I, I know you've been through a lot, man. <laughs> Question. Do you have a changing room? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I can put up a curtain if you would like to wear it out. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, so he'll put up a curtain in the corner so you can change into your robes. When in Rome, do us Romans. But this is not Rome, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's Rome? Uh, it's a, uh... Jean Snaps idiom. Yes. I'm not an idiot. Ugh. <laughs> There we go. I know I don't know the language, but I, I, I you know. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's appropriate. But yeah, I, uh, theater will change into more local garbs and, uh, you know, on the way out. Because I did just give a man my shirt. Yes, you did. And it would be uncouth and probably a little dangerous for your pasty white skin to be walking around shirtless. Extremely pasty white. This man, this man will glow in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so 
what do you think? Do you want to fade out on Theodore and Jean as they walk victorious into the plaza and pick back up in the, uh, in the, uh, whatever the heck you were in before? I believe it was the, uh, that secret chamber? Yes. In the pyramid. I mean, if we want to jump there, we could ha always have some more fun with these two and, uh, invent a new character as we go. <laughs> Uh, I will. I'll let the three of you decide on that. I will let uh, Terry decide since we're still down one. Um, if he wants to go back to something more high tension or or have I... some low tension fun. I don't mind either. I, I I'm needing you. To I, I know you're voice. leaving this to me, but if you have an idea of what you want to still do with Theodore and. Like, after leaving, like, go for it. Um, let me, let me phrase it like this. Can you give us, can, can you introduce a character for us? Why don't we? Terry? Why don't we go ahead and go back to the chamber? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Instead of, instead of putting ourselves on the spot here. Uh, I don't think it's unreasonable for Birdie to be a little bit overwhelmed and not contribute as much right now. Um, so, we're back to the dark room. Birdie is uh, recovering from possession and nearly being shot. Uh, everybody, I assume, is pretty pretty shook up from what you just witnessed. Connor, you were still I, uh, dealing with some guilt, I think. For a number of cuts, I'm still on the ground, crying. That makes sense. Victor is still wreathing with anger. That also makes sense. Um. Uh. Well, if anyone else wants to do something right now, uh, I I do have a few things in mind that Victor needs to do. So uh, now it's time to act. Otherwise, I'll go ahead. No, I'll let you do your thing. Okay. So uh, James James is on the floor crying, right? Yeah, I'm on my knees crying. Victor, Victor's gonna just slowly walk over to James, grab him by his shirt a little aggressively, and try to get him to stand up. This is not a time to cry. We need to know what's happening. We need to figure out what the fuck that thing is and how to destroy it. I need you to read these fucking walls. I need to know what what is in this room. Can you do that for me right now? You have to give me a little bit more time. Time is something on our side. Whatever he wants us to stop doing, we need to know. I, I understand that. But I, I need to collect my thoughts. We, you, you knew, um, did you, do you know if your family, if your parents have passed? Was that, was that an illusion? Do you know? Because if you do know. You know who caused it. And there's only one way we can deal with it. Whatever the fuck he wants to stop. I I hope it's not real. I mean... If it is real... One of them's, one of them's alive and causing troubles for them, so... Maybe? Maybe they're just captured. Or maybe they're in hiding. 
while one of them's out making ruckus or is trying to find them. The only way to find them right now is to continue this trail. Gather yourself up. Get back to reading. I have to go deal with another problem right now. Uh, at, at, during this conversation, I would have forced you back to your feet. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, Victor. Victor's gonna dust him off a little aggressively, and then turn to Connor as he as he like seethingly walks towards him. I need to talk to you. What was with that pause? You would have sold us out. So, oh, this is aimed at me now? Yes, yes, yes. I was going to say no. What took so long? Do you not have any guts? And all he does is just slowly turns at Victor. And he says, you chose this life. So did you, given that you're right here beside me? Only because of her. <laughs> I also had a her. She's yeah. dead now. I know what I'm doing. If you don't have the conviction, I will help you find your guts. Even if that means it's, if it's on the floor. Don't. Do not. Side with them. I have no problems. Ending another life. <laughs> it's just a one more on a long tally. either know what you're about or leave. Connor, uh, Connor just lights a cigarette. Not saying anything. Takes a puff. Turns and looks at you. And says, he lied to me. Who lied to you? The, the, the thing we're trying to kill right now. He lied to us. Which, more importantly, he lied to me. What did he lie about? He said that James's family is dead. But I trust Hammer's word way more. I we have a... In, where I'm from, there's a there's always a figure that always tells lies. So this thing's a liar. I'm not going to choose sides with it. I can't trust it. As much as I want to believe you, part of me thinks you might lie to me at one point. Hesitation in the face of a god. I want you to take some time to think if you want to stay over here. Find out what happened. Find these answers. Because if you don't have the backbone for this, I don't want it to collapse on me when I need it the most. I wouldn't have I ever let you down. <laughs> Connor <laughs> takes a longer drag <laughs> from his cigarette. Uh, d does Connor l chuckle at that? Just yeah. Like, Victor, Victor's just stone-faced. Murderous intent right now. Because, you know, effectively, he's he, he, he's been, he, like, he went into a death basement with you before. 
He did, he did. And he, I, Victor was the one who left. Yeah. We, we, we share a hearty chuckle, and Cotter offers a smoke. Victor, Victor While they're won't doing that, I'm... I'm gonna go and walk over to the other wall and start reading it. Start trying to uh, figure out what there is that I can find out from it. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you head to the southern wall, uh, there's a map. Uh, it's kind of distorted, but you can make out it's a map of Eurasia, Africa, Australia, and the Western Pacific. There are mountains and rivers and continental outlines. There are no cities or nations shown on it, but there are three uncut rubies forming an elongated triangle, marking a point in the East China Sea, in Central Kenya, and in Western Australia. All right. Is there uh, anything written on the walls? Uh, let's see. Yeah. So there's um. Your archaeology is eighty. So as you're examining this, you're going to realize, uh, this map is not ancient. Like. You don't know exactly when, but fairly recently somebody carved this into the wall. Mm. Uh, there's an inlaid ebony band marking an arc crossing the Indian Ocean. And there are arcane symbols bordering the map. Uh, they are not Egyptian hieroglyphs. Uh, if you want to try to read them, you can make a Cthulhu Mythos roll. You can also ask me if you yeah. need to. Victor I'm not Fair. trying to... James is just going to go and yell, <clears throat> Hey guys! Come over here. I want to take a look at this. Uh, by the way, it, uh, what's up with uh, Birdie right now? Are they like collapsed or something flavor-wise? Yeah, I think not not like catatonic or anything, but just like sitting down and recovering. Yeah. Birdie Con Connor, Connor is going to minutes. Yeah. He he's going to ignore the request to look at the weird scribbles on the wall that he has no business knowing anything about <laughs> and he's going to grab <laughs> Birdie and bring her to like the hallway. Okay. Get her as far away from that throne as possible. There's, there's no, there's no reason for it. He just feels it's better. Well, yeah, she might sit in it again. You don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> you need a Cthulhu Mythos roll. Yeah, Cthulhu Mythos. Whoa! Um. And the luck. I don't have the luck. I don't have the luck. Um. You know can what? I push it? Well, James has I really, a lot of pictures. I uh, it's a two. James and has uh, he and, and Connor will uh, will eventually go and should look at the scribbles. Okay. After, you know what? After getting Birdie to safety, I'll try and throw a hail mary. Yeah. Now I do want you to know, like nothing necessary to solving the whole mystery yeah, is going to be know. hidden. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. He is going to take a note from... Spend the uh, law, Connor. Spend the law. Yeah, yeah spe he's spending the law. <laughs> he absolutely is. Wow. But yeah, Connor's going to like actually earnestly look for the first time and be like, Oh, I I recognize this. Yeah. Uh, it, it's... You're staring at these symbols and it starts feeling like... Like it's itching inside of your brain. You feel like... You feel this burning desire to like open up your skull and dig your fingernails into your actual brain matter as you're staring at these letters. But somehow the symbols resolve themselves in your mind 
And it says, The old ones shall come hence. All shall tremble before their awful might. Yeah, and, uh, uh, he caught her will, uh, you know, recite it, like, verbatim. And he says, does anybody know what an old one is? Because if I'm a gambling man, and I kind of am... <laughs> I know at least one old one, don't I? Not personally. That wasn't James, that no. was me. I don't know why it says that. <laughs> He's just going a little bit crazy. Yeah, does anybody have astronomy? Let me see if I do. I think we gave you astronomy. When we when we worked you on your character, we were like, hey, what's a what's another nerd thing? <laughs> um would a difficult occult role given no, no, I, a man can try. A man can I'm not gonna try. fault you for asking. It's just it's not appropriate for this one. Yeah, I got nothing on that. Okay. Well, I don't think I have that. Really? Interesting. You do have geology, which isn't appropriate for this, but that might be the other thing that you got. Yeah. Yeah, so then what you have is that message carved into the wall. Also, this, this map that somebody carved within... Like, this is not ancient. Somebody carved this uh, recently. And where? jimmed uncut rubies to form an elongated triangle between the East China Sea, Central Kenya, and Western Australia. And then jammed a piece of ebony uh, in an arc crossing the Indian Ocean. All right. That's what you see on this wall. I'm gonna mostly focus on that uh, on that triangle. Um, I'm trying to focus on those gem placements and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Kind of like try and burn that into my memory. You can um. So if if anybody has a large piece of paper, you can make a rubbing, or you can just like make a drawing of what you're looking at. You said you uh, have a, a notebook, so you can easily just, like, jot down where they are. Yeah, yeah. Would sleight of hand be... Uh, art or sleight of hand be used to, like, jot it down? I'm not going to make a... roll anything to do that. Yeah, okay. I can... I can quickly go and sketch it out. Since I still have the notebook. Um... What happens if I touch the rubies? Uh, they just feel like rough rubies. Okay. We're in Egypt. Kenya is not far. Kenya is to the south. What if we... Let's come back to this painting. Let's check out the northern wall. Right. Yeah, as you're looking at the carvings, there are two different carvings on the northern wall. Mm. All right. And if nobody has astronomy, I'd like you to try natural world. I got that! Ooh. That's pretty good there. Oh, <laughs> damn! Jesus. Let's go! Okay. Good you call me a nerd. <laughs> you are a nerd, man. You're the best nerd. <laughs> uh, so, with that, uh, you're going to get the result you would for a normal astronomy roll. Uh, and you're going to recognize that there is a star chart. And there's also a, a depiction of 
planetary positions in this solar system. So on the star chart, you all mm -hmm. of the all of the points you're seeing on it are with are uh, within our galaxy. You're seeing Fomalhaut, you're seeing Aldebaran and Deneb, a few other stars on there. Uh, and on the um, planetary positions chart. You're going to have to go back and forth between your notebook and your calendar and the chart a few times. But you're going to realize that this is, uh, like, this is, if you're looking up at the night sky, seeing the planets in this position is only going to happen on specific dates. Mm-hmm. And the next time that you'll see this position is January 14th, 1926. Is that a how year away? away? How far away is that from now? Uh, it is currently April, I think about April 20th of 1925. I'm, I'm going to circle that date on one that... I'm going to mark it a bunch saying that that's supposed to be like a uh, planetary alignment. Not just a planetary alignment. You got a critical success. So I'm just going to give right. you all the information you can get here. <laughs> uh, you're going to recognize that like I'm going to, we're going to assume that you also have an almanac with you. Uh, in that on that date, when you flip forward in the almanac, there is going to be a total solar eclipse across the Indian Ocean. And you're going to, as soon as you put that together, you're going to understand what the uh, what the ebony band on the map is. Like that is right. that is clearly representing the area of the Earth that is going to be in darkness due to the eclipse. The rubies in specific positions. You haven't put that together yet. You don't know what that's about. Um. All right, I will be sharing this information with them while also trying to start jotting notes down. Mm -hmm. Given that this is probably more magic in nature, and those rubies are on specific points, mm -hmm. can I? I assume that they're places of power for whatever they're trying to do um i'm not sure if mythos or occult here would give me a better estimated guess as to what uh let's go with occult yeah occult let's go 44 okay so this is not a you didn't roll high enough thing mm. this is with this, you know that there's no particular reason why those sites should be connected to an eclipse. Like, this isn't some sort of traditional magic. Those aren't sites of, like, traditional magical power that should be tied together in some way. The knowledge isn't out there in the world to know how this is tied together. You need more. Okay. Um. But clearly, somehow, those sites and that date have something to do with each other. All right, all right. Gentlemen, I think our time here is past due to leave. Do you think there's anything else here we can gleam, or should we be on our way? I want to take one last look at one last look, but I want to take a look at the the last wall click. We won't stay for long. We won't go and study it, but I want to at least look at it. Do 
Can I take those rubies out? <laughs> Probably. You want to spend some time at it? So, what is that wall? That was the first what, wall. What am I looking here? Oh, was okay, it? That, yeah, that's actually yeah. the first wall that you looked at. Okay, I thought we were looking at, like, by the door still. No, it was the first, the first one that drew your attention was behind the throne. Okay. Now, all of the walls have uh, carvings of... Uh, Having heard the story of Nefren Ka from Dr. Ali Kafour, you can put together that mm -hmm. what's on all of these walls is like images from that story. But there were those three gotcha. reliefs on like those three sections that were telling you more information here. So then, uh, never mind. I think it is good to. Good to go. Let us let us rid ourselves of this place. <sighs> I can't wait to repress this. I can't wait till we leave and the authorities are outside. <laughs> That's the. There oh we. no. I didn't know that it was. Oh uh, no. I didn't know that I could show this to you. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, uh. You'll make your way back down the spiraling tunnel uh, and into the base of the pyramid and looking out through the um, through the wooden slats you can verify that nobody's looking at where you are but uh, <laughs> yeah, you you did you were right to be a little concerned as you make your way back over towards your your vehicle uh, you can see that Ibi is surrounded by some of the guards who have noticed that packs of tourists have come and gone, and he's kind of standing there by himself. Mm. And as you draw close, you can hear them interrogating him about uh, what he's doing here, if he's planning to rob the pyramids. I didn't take the gems, by the way. Chose not to? Yeah. No, nope. and I don't think they're going to really fully check out. Uh, see, all see, this is not points. how I get cursed. I will, uh... We're away from the entrance, right? We're starting to head towards the vehicle? Yeah. Alright, as long as we're not noticeably, and we're just coming from, like, a an okay spot. Mm -hmm. I will go and uh, shout out saying, sorry we took so long. Okay. I'll go up to our friend and give him a hug. <laughs> and apologize for our absence. and like So much I wanted to go and look at it and I wanted to jot down. Victor, you're going up and giving him a hug. Make a try roll. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're fine. You've been trying to make friends and influence people ever since you started this session. Let's, uh... uh. Okay. Uh, you... You uh. hug him. He goes... <laughs> <laughs> like, uh... You, you wrap your arms around his upper arms and he's, he's he goes rigid for a moment and his hands shake a bit in the air. Then when you put him down, he backs up from you real quick. And he turns to the guards and he says, You see? Yes, they were they were off just looking at the pyramids. I guess they got a little bit lost. I don't know. Haha, <laughs> it's uh, these tourists, you know. <laughs> I didn't fail, though. 
What are you talking about? Yes, he did. I didn't botch. You didn't botch. You're right. You're one point away from that. <laughs> you know what I'm going to start doing sometime? I'm not going to do it right now. I might start offering you luck in exchange for making your rolls worse. Oh, I absolutely I like will start doing that. <laughs> I like that. I, oh, I like... oh, you have no idea. <laughs> the number um, of times that I want to fail a check. <laughs> do, do these gentlemen need something, or are we free to go? Yeah, they're, they're, they'll menace you a little bit, but if you're all here and you're about to leave, they're gonna, they will take a quick look in your packs to make sure you didn't, like, rip something off of one of the pyramids. Did I? No, I don't. I None don't have anything did. illegal on me. Not if you did. Yeah. Uh, they will not actually notice that they should be looking in the uh, in the jeep notebook. Or in the in the car for the piece of the pyramid that you already had that you brought here. Uh, so they will tell you just to get back to town. It's getting towards evening. It's not time for tourists to be out here. I'll thank him and you know get back in the jeep. And you're all allowed to leave. I keep saying jeep. It's definitely not a jeep at this point in history. I will. Uh, I will apologize to them, saying I'm sorry. I'd... Again. Yeah, they will. Uh, they will let you go. It'd be a very quiet ride back. I feel like. I believe it. Uh, Ibby will try to make some conversation and ask if you found what you were looking for out there. We found more than what we were looking for. Stares off into the dusk. Well, how wonderful! I hope. Dramatic, you... Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I think around that time we get back, Theodore and John just chilling again. They did their one good deed of the day. <laughs> do they, do they tell everybody immediately? And why not? They're planning on going to see, uh... Oh, what was their name? Warren. Warren. Yeah, how does... I, how does ahead. Victor take that? That his son went off without explicit instructions. Victor... Oh, I almost forgot. He was threatened. Oh. Um. Who was threatened? Uh, oh, Theodore was, yeah. Theodore, absolutely. yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, Victor, you know, not a not a side that everyone gets to see very often, but um, Victor would, uh, you know, yell at him a little bit, not in in a father like not knowing where his son was and that you know he was threatened, he 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 will lash out a little bit. Still a little tense from the murderer of his wife, still present in his mind. What what are you up to, Connor? Uh, Connor is, uh, you know, just uh. Basically sitting and, uh, you know, enjoying a drink. Uh, John was watching you very carefully, you know, you know, correcting, uh, yeah, correcting your son. And being, and just basically like, like looking at you, making sure that you're not you know, gonna go too far. Like, he, like, you could see it on his face. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, like he does. He, he's the kind of guy that not hide what he's thinking. Uh, yes. James would like to uh, hear the story one more time. Uh, the story from uh, Warren. Is that what you mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put it into into what's it called, uh, Mira. But no. it's also right here for you. But I'll put it in the mirror so you can peruse it at your leisure. Uh, do yins want to move on to yet another segment tonight? Or are you feeling like wrapping it up? Because I'm good either way. We got like 15 minutes. I think I think we all deserve a good hearty meal. And sit That's down and just casually discuss things. That's fair. Uh, one thing, uh, there had been a question earlier. It, it, Warren's statement involved uh, involved a phase of the moon. He said it was when the moon was at its smallest. Uh, and you questioned when exactly that was. Well, today is. Tonight is going to be waning crescent moon, mm -hmm. uh, and the evening of the twenty second would be the next time the moon is going to be in the same state that he described. So, not tonight, not tomorrow night, but the night after. And of course, I have all that stuff, so I would actually know that. You've got the almanac with you. That's right. But yeah, and amongst all of that, you can put together a hearty meal. I think after uh, James shares all the information, uh, when he gets his food, I think he's going to not actually eat with everybody. I think he's going to actually go back to his room and eat his food there. You'll still think, uh, say thank you for the food, but just needs to go to his room. Uh, Theodore will chip up and, like, you're just gonna eat by yourself? You mind if I join you? Come along. <laughs> Thank you. We could I, probably I, I use your company. That was being a bit of a asshole. It's not like I got captured again. <clears throat> <clears throat> what? Hmm? What happened? to your mother I'm sorry I don't mean to be I don't mean to be blunt you're Vic... no. a very a... quiet man and uh I'll, I'll explain a little bit about what we found at the pyramid And say that uh, you're he I can 
somewhat understand, but not fully. When that that expedition my dad went on, I, me and my mom, we, we, he wanted us to stay home, get some money, bring it back. I don't remember a lot of it myself. There were people that took us talking about some god or thing I I didn't I wasn't paying attention. They're telling us how we were going to be sacrificed and that when my father got back he would be joining them and they got a little impatient they took my mother killed her for whatever ancient bullshit they they were spouting I, uh, I was alone, afraid after that. When it got to my turn, my dad finally showed up and just started murdering them all in front of me. I, after that, we just kind of went place to place looking for mad men like that. I'm I'm so sorry I didn't I didn't know that. It's not something I like to talk, to talk about because we live in the present. You can't you can't focus on what you can't change. My dad seems very headstrong in trying to stop trying to find what reason it happened to us and mm, right that wrong but I just go with it you know if if there's wrong in the world the least we could do is try to make it right At very least make sure it doesn't happen again I like that way of thinking. We haven't talked about this before. You're saying that um, they the cultists showed up while you were on the other adventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I I really like the impact that uh you know as soon as it happened he got marked that um that there was already some sort of conspiracy in the United States that uh, was linked to was it. Yeah, yeah. It. I I really enjoyed it. Because okay. you know he's away, he can't he can't interact over here. Okay, yeah, I will work that in. We we haven't really discussed it, but that's kind of what I've been thinking sure. about. There there's no hard anything hard, so I ad vit lived a little bit. That's the way it works. <laughs> we ad lib stuff, and then we make it work with the story. That's uh. That's role playing. Oh, Is like... Connor and Birdie okay? I don't really know what happened there. I'll explain a little bit more about how. Uh, well, we were in that ruin, or in the pyramid, in the little secret chamber. Birdie decided to climb and sit on top of the throne. A little bit after, I knew something was wrong because all the rocks started, or all the gems, whatever you want to call them, started to glow. Next thing we know, 
when we're talking to the Black Pharaoh. I, uh, do I know the name? Of, what was it? Neil Lepitet? Was that one of his names? Ner Lepitet is a god. Okay. Uh, the Black Pharaoh. Black Pharaoh is the name of an Egyptian god that is all but forgotten. Uh, seemingly intentionally, people tried to strike him from the from the records. Okay. And at one point, after his worship had been outlawed for some time, a sorcerer by the name of Nefren Ka came to Egypt, brought back the worship of the Black Pharaoh, and then ruled as a pharaoh for so long that his name and the name of his god became synonymous. Okay. Um, I don't mean to steal a bunch of the spotlight, so if, uh, Joey wants to do anything, or James, if you want to talk some more about what happened. Uh, I... yeah, I'll continue explaining how after that, he started talking to us, trying to threaten us. To stop our, our our search for answers. And he went after your father and talked about how if he pretty much continued doing this, you wouldn't be safe. That's why you're dad act the way he did when he got back for Connor it was about being safe give me give me one second he, <laughs> theater's gonna get up you know everyone else is just like sitting around the table quietly eating he's gonna grab uh Connor like hey come on come on What was that last bit? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to. Up. Uh, I'm trying to get you to come into the room. He wants to bring you into the conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think there's. It's not necessary to repeat what happened, but if you want to react to something that happened, you can go ahead and and do that. And we can assume that James and Connor tell you everything. Um, Connor, are you okay? Yeah. I'm okay. I think you might feel that that's as much as you're going to get from him. Y yeah. <laughs> I think this will be where we wrap it up. <laughs> Just with, uh, Connor, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? That sounds fair. I mean, he is a guy, so... I I should have asked more about James, but, like, I, I, I felt like I was leaving Joey out of this. I am sure... Ian's will find more action. You'll find somebody to fight next week. <laughs> Any idea where you want to turn to? I feel like we need to pick more extras up. <laughs> we need a crew A and crew B. I, I think we're mostly turning to the B crew when we don't have enough people to play the A crew, so... I'm not sure really <laughs> more of them. I I like I find it funny and I will I will make this a thing. Okay. Well, if you start recruiting even more extras, I am gonna start killing people, so that's just the way it works. 
Well, I mean, I'm trying to get you to kill one of my characters. Okay, yeah, but I might not kill the one you want me to. Oh, God! <laughs> uh, you're, you're just asking for some madness, then. Yeah. Just go, right. don't go up any mountains, otherwise it'd be the Mountain of Madness. Ah, that's a book! Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Alright, everybody, thanks for playing. We'll pick up next yeah. week. Yeah. Joey, Joey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't sideline you at all, did I?